So I woke up the next day. I got up. My alarm went off, so I got up. The last trip through Luxor was long and exhausting. Um, you know, going down a road that's got like literally almost nothing there is tiring. So, waking up was kind of hard. However, When I got up, I realized where I was, and that got me moving. I got up, went out, met my sister and a boyfriend at the cafe, had some breakfast. And what was I doing the entire time that we were eating breakfast? I was staring across the Nile in anticipation. I was across the Nile from the Valley of the Kings. Good morning, everybody. Once again, I'm at the Nile. Almost every single hotel we've been to has been on the Nile, and I've got a couple of minutes, so I'm going to be talking for a second. Right across the Nile, right over there, is the Valley of Kings. You can't really see it. There's too much freaking smoke. I'm not sure what the smoke is today. Smog, maybe, from all these tractors. I have no idea. Last night, it was completely open. And my god, it was gorgeous. My brain still couldn't comprehend that. I was... I was dying. So we finish breakfast, and I'm told that I need to meet them in the middle of the hotel, obviously. You know, the Egyptologist can meet us up there, and so on. Huge hotel. It was a labyrinth. Um, I got outside, got to the Nile, I did my video from the Nile. Well, we started from the Nile. So everybody could see what was behind me, which was the Valley of the Kings. I went through the hotel. I got up there. As I was finishing my video, I sat down. And not even about a minute passed. And this cute little Egyptian walks up to me and she says, are you waiting for someone? Maybe. Depends on who I'd be waiting for. And she says, well, you must be waiting for me. And she introduces herself. I'm like, oh, okay, that makes a lot more sense. Okay, so this is actually really funny. She tells me her name, and I tried really hard to get it. I think I ended up with Shima, right? Um, I do believe you pronounce her name Shima. Shima, right? So, Shima, in Arabic, is a female name, and I believe kind of translated means beautiful. If I'm going through what I looked up correctly, eh? I mean, you can correct me, you're there. <laughs> um, yeah, I, uh, I totally mispronounced this name. It was, it was a rough one. And I'm talking to her and as I'm talking to her, you know, we both take selfies. We <laughs> do a couple things and thank the gods for her. We started talking about Egyptian things. 
And as we were talking about Egyptian things, I was like, crap. She goes, what? And I'm like, hold still. I'll be right back. So book it back to my room. Oops. I forgot my cards. Um, I uh, get to my room, grab them, get back. My sister and her boyfriend were there. And we leave. So, like I said before, this is when shit started getting weird. So, first thing that happened was that the Egyptologist told me she could feel me. I gave kind of an odd look. Then I started thinking about it for a minute, and I'm like, she's talking like energy. She can feel my energy, right? Okay, that's not something I was expecting to hear on my trip. But that spurned me taking my cards out, because I remembered that I got them out for her. Um, I bring them out and I hand them to her and I'm like, here, look at these. So she grabs my cards and she looks at them and fans them out and starts taking cards out and pointing at things and explaining what it is to me. I'm sorry, what? What? So she just draws random cards and she starts explaining them. She's like, oh, 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 here. I'm like, oh, please keep going. Go on. So eventually I get the cards back from her. And when I get the cards back, I fan the cards out and I tell her to pick a couple because I want to see what happens. So <laughs> she grabs a couple of cards and I flip them over and she tells me what's on the cards. It's exactly what I wanted her to do because I wanted to know what was actually happening. Not like, you know, what the cards meant, not what, like, everything was going on. I wanted to know what was actually happening on the card. Um, I can't for the life of me remember which card she pulled. But then she did it to me. So I reversed it, right? She took the cards and I pulled something. So when I pulled something, she started to talk about the lotus flower. And when she started to talk about the lotus flower... She started talking about how Egypt was my home. Like, the cards were even telling me I belong here. And I gave her kind of an interesting look, and I'm like... This isn't the first time I've heard this since my trip. Why do I keep hearing this? Right? So... I get the cards back, I put them away, and I pull my Isis deck out. So I hand her my Isis cards, and she looks at the cards, and, you know, she's just so excited about them again. And I'm, like, looking at her like, cool, <laughs> right? She's looking at them, and she's going through them, and, again, she is sitting there telling me all about what's on the card. And I'm just eating this up. Like, I had no idea that these cards went so deep. You know, I, I'm in America, so, yeah. <laughs> I was like, no, please, keep talking. <laughs> I, uh, I really like hearing this, actually. Thanks. <laughs> um, Lance learned a lot from her. In any case, so, you know, after... 
spending a little time playing with the cards and doing stuff with her and, you know, talking about, like, what the cards mean and so on, we actually went to the Temple of Hephaestus. This was a temple. This was actually a lot of temples that were carved into a mountain. So Hepaset, Hep, Hepa, Hepaset, Hepaset was the only pharaonic woman to ever rule Egypt. And she had this huge temple that was cave, that was carved into a mountain. Literally, you drive through a couple of things and straight into the mountain. And it's right there. You're like, wow, all of that cliff and boom, there it is. <laughs> it was actually kind of amusing. I've seen it, obviously, documentaries have it and all sorts of places have it, right? But you never realize just how interesting it is, where it's carved and, you know, the size of it until you actually see it. A lot of that in this trip. So, one side of the temple, I think, if I remember correctly, one side was a temple of Horus, and then the other side of the temple was a temple of Anubis. I think it was Horus. So, of course, you know, I got my cards out, did a couple of things, and yeah, I found a Temple of Anubis. I was actually rather happy about my Temple of Anubis finding. It was pretty awesome. I had a lot of, you know, I mean, Temple of the Sun, Temple of Isis, Horus the Avenger, Horus... All sorts. Lance was going through every single god he could possibly go through while he was there. Even Sobek. Gods, no, I didn't know that Sobek had a temple. Um, <laughs> so, as we're running around, you know, I'm getting pictures, I'm doing a bunch of stuff, and getting my cards out, and then putting them in the different temples and the different places. Um, you know, the Egyptologist was helping me do all of this stuff, and it was awesome. She was such a big help. And, uh, <laughs> she was super cool. So, we go through, you know, the bottom of the temple, and I get a bunch of other pictures, and we leave. Right? There was a lot to take in in that temple. A lot. Um... I wish I could have gotten through the doorways and seen what was on the inside of them because they went deep and I couldn't get enough light in the doorways to be able to see what was back there. But I think I got some pictures of it. You know, I flashed and tried to get pictures of what was back there. Um, <laughs> it was freaking amazing. Beautiful, amazing things. We stop over at this little, like, rest area, and I can't remember if, I think it was, my sister was looking for, like, a dress or something, and she was kind of poking around at it. Um, me, you know, I started meandering through everything and looking at stuff, and God's behold, there it was, my cane. A wooden cane with an onk on the top. And I had to have it. I did. I had to have it. So, um, I'm sitting there, you know, I'm looking at the thing, and they have, like, the three different colors of the canes. And I'm like, hey, how much is this thing? And the guy is like, what was he? He said, like, $70. And I'm like, $70? Are you kidding? 
right? Lance is not doing this right now. Lance is way too... I'm leaving, right? I'm like, 30. And he goes, 30? And I'm like, 30. I'm from America, and this is a $30 thing. 30. He goes, I know, no, 30, no. And I was like, all right, fine. So I put it back and start walking off, right? And he goes, wait, 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 45. And I look at him and I go, 30. <sighs> no, 30, right? And I'm thinking, in my brain, I remembered um, Nasir. And he was doing this whole bartering thing, you know? And I was trying to remember, like, you know, how much it was between the two, right? So, I was like, $30. American $30. That is all I'm going to pay. Because this is, yeah, right? I mean, I know, I work in retail. I know how much things are, <laughs> right? So, eventually, like, you know, I'm like, nope, sorry. Start walking off. He goes, 30, 30, 30. And I was like, damn straight 30. God. So I pull out thirty dollars, I give it to him, and I get the cane. And I was like, and I sat there, and I twirled the cane in my hand, and I put it down on the ground, and I go, "Yeah." <laughs> and I'm sitting there and playing with the cane, you know, got it in my hand, and I'm kind of spinning it and putting it on the ground, and that feels good, <laughs> right? So here I am, hat, cane, necklace, and I'm like. All right. I don't think I can get any more Lance than this, right? <laughs> so we leave. We ended up at the Valley of the Kings. The entrance to the valley was, it was rather cool. Um, we had like this little cars and the car, you know, I was kind of in a little bit of a shock where I was because I was like looking around the mountain like, holy crap. I knew where I was. Yeah. <laughs> um, so <laughs> we get into this little car and the guy in the front, he's like, would you like to drive? And, you know, I, I, I couldn't understand them at first. You know, I was too busy staring at stuff, trying to, like, get my composure back. You know, Lance was really excited to see this. He knew what was coming, as usual. And, uh, so, you know, finally he starts taking me up to the front. I'm like, oh, drive. No, 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 that's cool, that's cool. I'm good, I'm good. No, thank you, <laughs> right? So, I hop back in, and I get my phone out, and I start, like, you know, taking pictures of stuff taking pictures of things behind me, you know, right? And eventually we get back up there. So she started talking about things. And when she started talking about them, she had this little booklet. And on the inside of this booklet were pictures. And she was talking all about, like, the tombs and the mummies and so on and so forth. And these were, like, some of these pictures were old, like, seriously old. And I was like, hmm, look at all of those pictures. <laughs> like, holy crap. And uh, she then said, you know, you can buy this for this much money and so on and so forth. And I kind of looked over her and I kind of looked back. And I decided, in my best interests, it was extremely useful and extremely educational that I should buy that. It had two CDs on the inside of it. One of them was a CD of pictures of all sorts of places from Cairo to Luxor and all the different temples and all the different things. And oh my God, it's amazing. Um, I haven't figured out how to use the video yet. The video in question is very old encoded. So I've got to find something that has that kind of an encodation. And 
yeah, re-encode the entire video system of these two videos. It's rather funny. But the pictures, you know, they were extremely useful. Um, so we get done talking about it. We take a couple of steps and one of us, I can't remember which one of us said it. It wasn't me. One of us decided to say, you guys still haven't walked like an Egyptian this entire trip. And I was like, you're right. So this was absolutely a good time to do this and the Valley of the Kings, right? Um, yeah. So we get up there and, you know, I'm doing stuff. And as I'm like trying to get everything together, I take my cane and I put it between my legs. And my sister looks at me and she goes, Lance? And I'm like, yeah. And she goes, that probably isn't where you want to put that. And I was like, you're probably right. So I <laughs> take my legs apart and drop it. And I'm like, oops. She starts talking. I was walking up the hill. And what she was saying was that there was a mountain. And the reason why they put the Valley of the Kings down here was because of this pointy mountain. Right? And she looked at me and she asked me, what does this mountain represent? What does the mountain represent? So, I guess the mountain actually stood for the way to the heavens. And so the mountain represented Ra, right? I had no idea. I seriously, I had no idea. That blew my mind. I know that my sister was saying that like, you know, I, I think I put this up at some point. And my sister was telling me that it's not what it meant, but it's in my notes. Uh, I was like, that's actually really interesting. I need to write this down. <laughs> right? So, yeah. I got my little picture, you know, took a selfie with the mountain on the inside of my onk. And uh, coolest picture. Coolest picture. Right? I, um, I, uh, then, um, we get up to this rest area, and, you know, pretty cool little rest area. The Egyptologist, she's, uh, sitting up at the rest area, and she's waiting for us as we go through a couple of the tombs, and one of the tombs we went through was Tutankhamun. And my god. Hey guys, I'm in the Ramses too. I don't know how to actually get this on video. Hang on. No, thank you. No.
beautiful. There was so much in that tomb, so much, and there was nobody there. I talk a lot now, for the most part, the most impressive thing that I have is that tomb. Um, when I'm talking about Egypt, I, <laughs> I am still telling the story of me going to Egypt constantly. You know, I've, I've seen a lot of people, you know, walk in and out of the store with Egyptian things with, you know, but every time that I want to really blow their mind, I pull up this tomb. I do. It was beautiful. So cool. The inside of it was... Stars. Nut. Geb. I think almost every god was on the inside of this thing. Like... I can't even tell you how just wonderfully happy I was to be there at that one point with no one there and capable of taking a video of the entire thing from the bottom up. It was beautiful. I died a little inside. I was like, I've got to leave. I don't want to, but I've got to leave. So, I spent as much time as I could while I was there. Um, we went through a couple of other ones. The other couple of tombs, they were really quite impressive, actually. Um, just not nearly as impressive as that one was. That was the last tomb that we went to, and... Oh god, from beginning to end, like, the first one to the last one, my heart exploded, and my brain probably left my body somewhere in that tomb. Yeah, there's a little piece of me that I think I left in that tomb. Um, <laughs> it was so cool. Oh my god, it was so cool. So... I think this was the right day. Don't quote me on this because it's been a little while now. This wasn't like a major part of the day. Um, so we started heading back. And as we start heading back, we were like, we need to get something to eat. So there was like, where the hell is the restaurant, right? This tour guy, man, she was on top of it. Seriously, on top of it. We thought we were going to, like, a restaurant, like, that was, like, down somewhere, but, you know, we were like, why not just, like, stop somewhere real quick? She got us into this restaurant, and we were outside. There was this spectacular view of, like, this farm area. Beautiful farm area. And I guess it was, like, her cousin worked at this restaurant or something. And my God. Phenomenal. Seriously, phenomenal. And I'm like, yes. <laughs> so we get this plate. Um, it had a bunch of stuff on it. Um, <laughs> I was... Kind of confused on a couple of them, you know, but I dug into them, all of it, because I, I'm fucking in Egypt, why the hell not, right? The hell is this, right? And then I looked at this thing, and it was this giant green ball, and I'm thinking, that can't be an olive, is that an olive, right? So, you know, I'm like, I ask, what is this, right? 
my sister looks at me and she says, it's an olive. I'm like, it can't be an olive. It's huge. <laughs> Shima, she grabs the thing and she goes, oh my God, Habibi. And she picks it up and plops it on my plate. And she says, try it, try it. And I'm like, okay, 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 okay. <laughs> so I'm like, fine. <laughs> right? So I take a bite of it and I'm like, yeah, it is an olive. <laughs> All right. Wow, olives are really big in Egypt, right? Another one of those shocking things I didn't know about, right? Um, I, uh, <laughs> we sat in that one corner and, you know, I drank my little hibiscus juice and I, like, chilled and I was, like, all zen and it was great. Seriously, never been as calm as I was in Egypt. I was... I don't know what in the world was wrong with me, but whatever it was, it was heavenly. Um, I, uh, I get done with the food. We leave, come back to the hotel, and we end up going to the pool. You know, sitting in the pool. And the pool with the sunset is one of the coolest things. Sunset over the Nile. Holy crap. Holy crap. Right? Um, I, of course, you know, we got drinks while we were in the pool. Because why not? So, you know, my drink of choice in Egypt still. Saqqara. Right? I ever go back to Egypt? I need to find that brewery. I will find that brewery. Um, so, Sakara beer is, you can tell that they only brew this beer for the tourists because I, I don't think beer is actually allowed in their religion, right? Muslims don't actually drink beer, right? Not sure. Anyway, maybe it's just me not being quite where I should be with the whole thing. But, you know, still, I don't think it's a thing they do. Um, I don't actually finish my beer in the pool because it takes them so long to get it. I actually end up finishing my beer when I get back to the hotel room. So I plop down on the bed and turn on South Park in some kind of German language. Thankfully, I know all of South Park, so I don't even need to worry about trying to translate it because I know exactly what's going on. <laughs> and that is the reason why I was always watching South Park in Egypt. In retrospect, next time I go to Egypt, I'm taking a Roku, maybe an Amazon Fire or something, maybe Google, maybe a Chromecast. I'm like Chromecast. Because I can stream from my phone there. And if I can stream from my phone, then I can just watch things. And I, if you, you know, you live, you learn. Right? Um, my room in that hotel was astonishing. And the reason it was so cool was because the way I finished my beer was sitting on the porch looking over the Nile and looking at the Valley of the Kings, which was lit up. There is nothing cooler, nothing cooler than meditating, sitting cross-legged on a back porch in a hotel in Egypt, listening to the waves of the Nile hit the surface, looking directly at the Valley of the Kings. 
nothing cooler. My God. So, I went to sleep. And I woke up the next day. <laughs>